In the previous video, I uh, introduced you to stationary wave and uh, I'm sure you have got some idea as to what a stationary wave is and how it is generated. Uh, we know that it is generated when we have a bounded medium and there is a reflection of waves in that. And when these two reflecting, when the incident wave and the reflected wave superimpose, a stationary wave is produced. So we have also talked about a plane progressive wave, right? right? And how two plane progressive waves moving in opposite direction create a stationary wave. Now, in this equation, in this video, I'm going to look at a stationary wave and derive or get an equation for the stationary wave. The equation for a plane progressive wave moving in the x direction is y is equal to a sine 2 pi by lambda vt minus x. Right? This is a standard equation for a plane progressive wave where a is the amplitude of the wave and v is the velocity with which the wave is moving. Okay. So let us say that there is a plane progressive wave moving in a bounded medium. Let us say this is the bounded medium and there is a wave, maybe a longitudinal wave or a transverse wave right i am showing a transverse wave but it could be a longitudinal wave is moving in the x direction the positive direction of the x axis and here there is a boundary so this wave this incident wave which is going here will reflect and will have a reflected wave and these two will superimpose and produce a stationary wave so if i look at the incident wave the equation for the incident wave will be y1 is equal to a sin 2 pi upon lambda vt minus x as far as the reflected wave is concerned, if I consider this to be, a, 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 let us say, a free surface, right? free surface, then the equation will be y2 is equal to a sine 2 pi upon lambda vt plus x. Right? This is the boundary, is a free boundary. Right? But if it is a, a rigid boundary, then this equation will become y2 is equal to a sine 2 pi upon lambda vt plus x plus pi. This is if it is getting reflected from a rigid boundary. This happens because in, in case of a rigid boundary, a phase difference of pi is introduced. Therefore, I can write this as minus a sine 2 pi upon lambda vt plus x. Okay, now I have an option. I can consider as the reflected wave as either this Right. This is for rigid, so I'll get it right again rigid. Either this or this. The incident wave is going to remain the same, but the reflected wave for my derivation in this particular video, I could consider free or rigid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the um, rigid surface. Right? So the two equations that I will look at is this for the incident wave and this one for the reflected wave. So this is the equation for the incident wave and this is the equation for the reflected wave which is getting reflected from a rigid surface. Now, these two waves right, are producing the stationary waves because of superimposition. So, the equation of the wave, stationary wave will be y is equal to y1 plus y2. This comes from the principle of superposition. The principle of superposition says that the net displacement of a particle, right? if I consider any one particle over here, the net displacement of this particle up or down is the algebraic sum of the displacement due to wave 1 and wave 2. Right? So, this one the incident wave will displace this particle right, in some direction by some amount. The reflected wave will also displace it by some amount in some direction. Right? So the net displacement is obtained by the algebraic sum of displacement by the two waves. So this will give me the equation for the stationary wave that I am looking for. So y I will get as a sine 2 pi upon lambda vt minus x plus this, so I will get to save time, I will take a common and I will get over here sine 2 pi by lambda vt plus x. Okay, so this becomes my equation. Right? Now, how do I solve this? I will use my knowledge about trigonometry sine a minus sine b is equal to 2 cos a plus b by 2 sine a minus b by 2. Okay. Well, let me. So, if I use this for this over here, I will get y is equal to. Right? A is common. Right? So, inside bracket, I will get 2. Now, I am not, uh, to save time, I am not going to show all the, all the steps. I am directly going to write the steps. What we will get is, we will get 2 
cos if i do a plus b divided by 2 i'll get 2 pi upon lambda if it, it is addition vt plus vt will get minus x x will get cancelled so i'll get 2 vt by 2 so i'll get v, vt over here and sine if i'm doing this particular term minus this term minus so vt minus x minus vt minus x so i'll get a minus sign outside right over here right? or right now let me let me put a minus sign over here and i'll get here 2 pi by lambda x so this i can write as minus 2a cos 2 pi upon lambda vt sine 2 pi upon lambda x okay now we know that the velocity of wave is equal to frequency into lambda which is lambda by time period right so therefore i can write v upon lambda v upon lambda v upon lambda is equal to 1 upon t so this v upon lambda v upon lambda can be substituted by 1 upon t therefore the equation will take the form minus 2a right i first let me write the sine term doesn't matter whichever i write first 2 pi upon lambda x and cos will become 2 pi v upon lambda is 1 upon t so it will become t upon capital t and this becomes the equation for the stationary wave right this is, a, this is the final form for the equation of a stationary wave okay. so we have derived an equation for a stationary wave now with the help of this equation we will try to understand how nodes and anti nodes are getting created in a stationary wave right for example if i take the value of x over here right if i take let us say x is equal to uh, let me use is equal to lambda by 4 right? so if i use x is equal to lambda by 4 in this term then i'll get sine this term what let us see what it will become 2 pi upon lambda x is lambda by 4 lambda lambda will get cancelled 2 2 so i'll get this will become sine pi by 2 is equal to 1 if i take x is equal to 3 lambda by 4 then i'll get sine 2 pi upon lambda 3 lambda by 4 lambda lambda gets cancelled this will give me 3 sine of of course 3 pi by 2 right and that will be equal to minus 1 so when x is equal to lambda by 4, 3 lambda by 4, 5 lambda by 4, I get this particular term as plus minus 1, which is the maximum value for this particular term, plus or minus 1. So in that case, what happens is y is maximum. And when y is maximum, that, I'm, that means I am getting anti-node. This is how we get an anti-node. Right? Okay. Let us, uh, let me rewrite the equation y is equal to minus 2a sine 2 pi upon lambda x cos 2 pi upon t into t. I read it in the equation. Now let us take the value of x as lambda by 2. If I take x as lambda by 2, what happens to this term? I will get sine 2 pi upon lambda x is lambda by 2 lambda lambda gets cancelled i'll get this as sine pi and you know sine pi is zero and what happens is for x is equal to lambda by 2 3 lambda by 2 phi lambda by 2 i'll get value of y or, or sine this term as zero and when we get this term as zero y becomes zero so for these values i'll get y as zero and when i get a y as zero it becomes the node so this is what is happening so if i show the wave right, let me show the wave now over here right. let me show. let us say i have shown two wavelengths over here okay so if i look at the wave what what happens is over here this particular length is the wavelength lambda right this particular length it is lambda by this particular length is lambda by 4. If I go back to what I had explained earlier and if I keep this in front over here, when x is equal to lambda by 4, y is maximum and I get an antinode. You can see over here I am getting an antinode, maximum displacement over here. 
right? When lambda becomes 3 lambda by 4, which is over here, right? This is 3 lambda by 4. I'll get minus 1 and it will again, it's an again an empty node, right? If I look at this particular case, x is equal to lambda by 2, so it's over here. This is lambda by 2 over here. I get a node, y is 0, there's no displacement and I get a node. So this is a node, right? whereas this is an empty node I'm getting over here. This is also an empty node. Right? Again, we have a node over here that goes on. So this is how we are able to uh, understand nodes and empty nodes in a stationary wave with the help of this particular equation. We can do the similar thing with uh, this particular term also. Let us take various values of t. For example, if I take t, right, uh, I'll if I, if I take t as let us say t by four, what will happen to this term? Let us see. Cos two pi by t, small t is t by four. T t gets cancelled, so this will become cos pi by two is equal to zero. So when cos pi by this entire term becomes zero, y becomes zero, and there I get a node, right? So, and you can see over here, this part, if I look at, you know, if I take t time as t by 4, I'll get a node over here. So, you can understand it either way with the help of time t or with the help of x also. Right? And similarly, if you take time t as t by 2, 3 t by 2, and so on, you'll get anti node. Anti -node. So, this is how we are able to understand nodes and anti nodes. A final point I make I make before I end this video is we had taken in this case uh, if I go back to this particular page again we had taken this and this as the equation because we are considering a rigid boundary we can do the same exercise the same derivation by, by considering by considering this equation right this equation of course will remain this equation for the incident wave and we could take it with the help of this equation these two. And you again find that we will get similar equations and similar derivation and similarly we will also get nodes and anti nodes. So you can try this out with these two equations, do the same exercise again with this, these two equations and see for yourself as to how we are able to get an equation for a stationary wave as well as we are able to explain the creation of nodes and anti nodes in a stationary wave. Thank you.